Anyone want to open up in prayer? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here for another week, Lord God. Thank you for getting us through um, the days that have passed. Mighty God, I ask that you will just open our hearts to your word this morning. Heavenly Father, allow us to, you know, allow your thoughts to flow free. Allow us to share with each other, Lord God, and to learn new things, mighty God. And may, may your word speak to us in a different way so that we can get a lesson that we've been waiting for, our answers to prayers that we're, we've been praying. And Lord, just just free us of any anxiety, of any fear, of anything that would want us to feel down at this moment, Lord God, and just allow us to focus on you and enjoy your presence and your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer, Aliyah. And I know it will be answered as we talk because, you know, we're here coming together to fellowship to talk about the Lord and he's in our presence. He's in our midst already. And we give him glory and praise to be in the land of the living and to enjoy this wonderful benefit of you know, fellowshipping and encouraging each other. Anyone want to share a testimony? Um, I have a testimony. Okay. So all week, this week has been very nerve-wracking for many reasons because I had to do a lot of stuff that I was scared to do or very nervous to do. So um, I got nominated for second deputy head girl. You would know Anthony so I know Marianne doesn't know, or Marianne. So I got... Um, nominated for second deputy head girl at my school and that required me to do a speech on Monday in front of the whole auditorium and I don't know why I'm so scared to do those things now but I was scared this week and it made me lose a lot of sleep and I had a test to do and another speech to do in the week but I got through that and you know I'm grateful for that but the biggest thing this week was the speech because it was 10 minutes and I'm not used to speaking for that long out of my head I had to know the points and so forth and I was really nervous I was really just I was I was overthinking about it and over preparing even and you know I had to say to myself on the day I said you know Lord this is literally just one speech you know when we're in something we literally feel like it's this or it's the end like mm -hmm. we don't do this or, it, or like it's over mm -hmm. but I had to remind myself that I do have a chance to even do it over if I don't get the grade that I require or that I would want. And, you know, I did it and I was scared, but I find that I didn't get as bad as I, I thought I was going to get. I got 12 out of 16 and I asked my teacher if I could do it over and she said yes. But the point is that I got through it. And when I do get through those little stuff, it really makes me feel so good because I know that it's not of myself, even mm -hmm. in those little moments. And I'm just so grateful that God allowed me to be, you know, brave in that moment of fearfulness and to go up and just say, you know what, let me just do it to the best of my ability right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just grateful for God's strength and for God's um, confidence. Mm -hmm. so. I love that. I think that's that's beautiful. And, you know, life is so filled with so many of those experiences where we think, you know, this is it, <laughs> you know, like if we, we fail this, what's going to happen? We learn, we pick up, we go again the next time and you have the opportunity to to go again the next time. I don't know if I would put myself through it again so quickly, <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. You know, if you're ready to do that, go ahead. And I think that's awesome, the, the perspective that you have on it. You know, it, it's, it's glorifying God and it's building you up, you know at the same time so that's beautiful thank you for sharing Elia and I'm glad it went well I'm glad it went well because I know God is good. yes God is good and you prayed and I prayed and I'm sure others prayed so we know he hears our prayers any any other testimony or any shout out Marianne you gonna well I just want to say to Elia is that how you say your name Alia that good for you because <laughs> You know, public speaking is everybody's big fear, but if you're a leader in any capacity, you have to be able to speak in front of people. So you overcame your fear because God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So congratulations on that and good for you. God's, Thank you. God's like building you up to do what 
he wants you to do in the future, whatever that is. Amen. So good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. And I'm gonna I'm gonna share it. Hopefully you don't mind, Marian, because Marian oh. is an excellent speaker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he can give you tips. What what is the, the, the thing she would TED talk? She did a TED talk earlier. Yeah. Really? You know? yeah. <laughs> I need to watch that TED talk, man. I don't know TED Talk. I know. Yeah. I was a I was a huge TED Talk fan ever since I found them. And my dream, but I never thought it would come true that I would be able to give mm -hmm. one with this woman's group I was at a meeting and they're like we're sponsoring a TED talk I almost fell off the floor <laughs> and you know I um I auditioned it, it, the audition was just a little thing you had to just put a little YouTube video saying what you wanted to do and they said yeah because you know they knew me anyway and yeah it was a dream come true it's a TEDx you just go TEDx and my name Miriam Marzano and it'll come up but anyway yes it's definitely awesome. watch that after. Yes, and and that's a testimony in and of itself, Mary, and just oh. the story. <laughs> well, know. you know what? I years ago I was just hanging out in my house and I said, God, what is like? I was trying to think of a desire that I had, and I said, I love public speaking, but I don't. What would I talk about? And who would I speak to? And what would I say? So I literally just gave it to God. I said, God, if you want me to speak, just make something happen, and I literally just said that and let it go. And within like two weeks, I went to support my friend who was speaking at the homeless shelter and just all this stuff happened. Next thing you know, I was speaking at the homeless shelter for like the next nine years wow. <laughs> with this ministry there. And, so and then <laughs> other, other speaking, you know, things just came up through this woman's group and different mentoring programs they had. And I didn't even, you know, God just made it happen because I guess he wanted it to happen. So we have to believe in that. Amen. And, you know, he put the desire in you and you, yes. you said it, put it back to him. Do not despise small beginnings, right? Because you started, oh. you know, yeah. just said it something small, but he took that and made it great. I right. Think. And when I first went to the homeless shelter, oh my gosh, it was, you can't even believe how bad it was. It was a really old shelter. And they had the people listen to the service before they would eat. So the place was jammed with like 200, you know, unwashed bodies and mm. people hung over or not really caring. They just were there for the breakfast. And you maybe had five people up front, you know, that I was speaking to really. But mm. yet, you know, every once in a while, somebody would, from the back would say, hey, I, I liked what you said or something. So it was a small beginning because mm. even though the room was packed, they could care less what I was saying. They just want to eat. But mm -hmm. these five people up front were there. And it started with five. So mm -hmm. it was small, but That's you know, it's interesting. It is interesting. It's amazing how God works. Good morning, Jaden. No, he... Good morning, Nancy. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You know, it's in line with our our um Bible study today. It's just you never know what God will do with the small things. And there's example after example of just him. That's like his perfect things, small things to do something great with it. And, and so we're, we're continuing today in our um, topic, you know, seed time and harvest. And um, the subtopic is the process. But before I go into it, I don't know, I want to give you, Jaden, I know you came on and others were talking. Did you want to Give a testimony, if not, not putting you on the spot, but just giving you an opportunity. If not, it's okay. Okay. I don't think I was just doing it right now. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right. So we had a few scriptures to read. Um, but before we get into even that part, I'm just going to ask a question, seemingly unrelated, but we'll tie it back in at the end. What was at the root of Christ dying on the cross for us. You know, he, what was the motive, I should say, behind him dying on the cross for us? Anyone? Um. Okay, what is at the base of it? Yes, we know he died for our sins, but what, I guess, what pushed him toward doing that? What is, what is it about, what was it, behind his 
he's doing that for us, him sacrificing himself, him dying for, you know, our sins. It's a four letter word. Love. Love. I <laughs> <laughs> yes, plain and simply love. And I, I just want us to have that in mind, you know, as we go through our lesson today. And it's a small group of us, not sure if others are able to join because I know I change the time, but um, still enough for us to have a, you know, a great discussion today. Uh, Isaiah 37 verses 30 through 31 was one of our scriptures. It says, this shall be a sign to you. You shall eat this year such as grows of itself and the second year what springs from the same. Also in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. We also had to read a few scriptures from John 15, verses 2, 4, 8, and 16. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. My, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. And lastly, Job 8, verse 7, though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. We know that in the right conditions, you know, a seed, again, the topic is seed, time, and harvest. A seed in the right condition, you know, um, can flourish, you know, we may think of the right conditions as the right amount of sun, good soil, and the right amount of moisture. But we know that see, there are seeds that sprout up and grow even in what we see as harsh conditions, right? We've seen things growing in the desert or, you know, on, on rough terrain. I was looking up one at the tundra, just the different things that can grow. Trees can't grow there, but other things can grow. And as mentioned last week, the Bible makes reference to seeds to explain things in the kingdom of God, such as the word of God, faith, and even the people of God. I love that God uses seeds because there's so much we can learn from them and draw parallels to our walk with Christ. Last week, um, I showed everyone some seeds, uh, some pictures of seeds. And, you know, just ask for what people thought once they saw the seed and then they saw the fruit that it produced. And these are just some of the comments people shared. Seeds look nothing like what they produce. It's easier to identify the fruit than the seed because I showed them the seed first and said, can you tell me what fruit it bears? And a couple of seeds can produce multiple trees and a great harvest. Something small can produce something great. And then the another comment is life is inside the seed, although you don't see it. All you see sometimes is this hard shell, little or bigger, but you don't know that there is life inside the seed. You know how similar this is to our Christian experience. We said seeds don't look like the fruit they produce. Psalm 51 verse 17 says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, the Lord is near those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. When we're in the position of you know, a broken spirit or a contrite heart, it is usually as a result of a very difficult experience. We are remorseful and repentant of our wrongdoings. We may even feel cast down at this time, but this is a seed that can bear fruit to a closer walk with God. A person may not think this way at the time of going through the experience, but is, it is the very thing the word says. God is near at this very moment. Another seed that looks nothing like what it produces is evident in Psalm 126, Verses five through six, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. 
he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless, you know, doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. The sowing of seeds in alignment with God's will will always produce a good harvest, even in the most harsh conditions. Exodus 1 verse 12 is a scripture we talked about last week when, you know, the Israelites were in Egypt. It states that in the time of the Israelite slavery in Egypt, that the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew. Seems like an oxymoron, right? The more trouble came against them, the more, the greater their number um, became. And Pharaoh and his men were in dread of the children of Israel, it says. You know, when you think of it, how can the captor, the, the, the master, you know, of the slaves be in dread of the slaves? But this is what God will do when his hand is on us. He will turn things completely upside down. Our reading in Isaiah 37 verse, um, you know, when we, our reading was 30 through 31, but when we go back, it speaks of the time when King Hezekiah, you know, he was the king of Judah, was threatened by the king of Assyria. The people of Judah had been taken away into exile and there was now yet another threat, which was against the remnant of Judah. Those, the remnant is those left behind. A remnant is a small remaining quantity of something. The threat was delivered in person um, by one of the servants of the king of Assyria. And then when that servant left by way of letter, and it says in Isaiah 37 verse 14, Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. You know, he prayed a heartfelt prayer, um, stating the position that the people were in and asking the Lord for help. In Isaiah 37, verse 21 through 22, it says, Then Isaiah, son of Amos, Isaiah was a prophet at that time. He sent a message to Hezekiah. And he says, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Because you have prayed to me concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word the Lord has spoken against him. And God went on to say several things in response. And he ends it um, with this. Because you, king of Assyria, have raged against me. And because your insolence has reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and bit in your mouth. And I will make you return by the way you came. He will make the king of Assyria leave, you know, the land um, of Judah. Then the Lord assures Hezekiah himself after that and he, of what he will do, you know, and he said he would do to the king of Assyria and this would be the sign, you know, this would be the sign to you, Hezekiah, that I'm surely going to do this thing. Again, the scripture, you shall eat this year such as grows of itself and the second year what springs from the same. Also in the third year, sow and reap plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. Another translation states, here is a sign for you. You'll know it's true by seeing that in three years, life will be normal again. This year, you'll live off what grows spontaneously. Next year, you'll live off what grows from that. In the third year, you'll do the planting and harvesting fields and vineyards and eat from what grows. And those who have survived in this land of Judah, this remnant will strengthen their roots and become productive again. What do you think about the prayer? And I'm not looking for one right answer here, just your thoughts. What do you think of the fact that, you know, of the prayer that Hezekiah prayed as it relates to the assurance God gave Hezekiah? Any thoughts that came to mind based on the scripture that was read? Can you repeat the scripture, please? I didn't sure. hear it properly. Sure. Um, this is the assurance God gave Hezekiah that he would, you know, move against the king of um, Assyria who was oppressing the people, um, who some people had been taken already into exile by the Assyrians. You'll know it's true that I'm going to take care of this king by seeing that in three years, life will be normal again. This year, you'll live off what grows spontaneously. 
Next year, you'll live off what grows from that. And in the third year, you will do the planting and harvesting fields and vineyards and eat from what grows. And those who have survived in this land of Judah, this remnant who stay, who was left behind will strengthen their roots and become productive again. Any thoughts about it? You know, he prays and this is God's answer. You know, any, any thoughts that come to mind about the answer itself? Because I have to move. There's a, go ahead. Go ahead. Marianne, you were going to say something? You're muted again. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, oh, now I lost my train of thought. Oh, it seemed like, and maybe I'm wrong, but it, to me, it seemed like God was answering the prayer and saying, I will help you kind of while you get your feet on the ground, but then as you sow, you will reap. Is that my getting it right? Yeah, it, it, it's just whatever you're thinking, whatever yeah. is coming. Yeah. That's like in the beginning, God will help you and have your reaping. And then as, as you reap, you continue to sow. So he'll start you off and then you continue sowing and then you will be eventually reaping what you sow. That's kind of what I get from it. That's definitely, definitely, definitely it. And I don't know if anyone has, um, wants to, to say something as well. Aliyah, Jaden, do you want to share what your thoughts are? Okay. So, you know, the invasion prevented the people from sowing seeds. But like you said, God still provided. He started them out. God still provided sufficient growth to preserve life. You know, it wasn't like before when they had the freedom to, to plant and move about and do whatever they want. You know, they were being oppressed by the Assyrians. So, you know, even in the time when um, the Midianites were oppressing the people of Israel and, and Gideon had to hide the things that he grew because that's what happens. They take off the food. You know, they're, they're trying to, you know, just kind of strangle the people, whether it be water, food, supplies, to, to just overcome them, to take over, you know? So in this time of the invasion, you know, there wasn't that much, but God said to them, you know, in the, this year, you live off what grows spontaneously. So you didn't get to plant because that, and sometimes, you know, during that time, the land had to be at rest anyway. And I believe that's when, if I remember correctly, that's when the Assyrians came in the year of the rest of the land, when they are not supposed to be planting or harvesting. harvesting. As I said, they could not move as freely as they did before. So before. No one can come this but he was still making a way for his people to survive. You know, living off what grows spontaneously. Sister. And I'm going to just mute. Thank you, others who have joined. Awesome. Um, hi, Sister Pam and Empress G. Glad you joined. Um, so, you know, we're talking about Isaiah 37. So he's telling them, live off what grows spontaneously. Um, you know, to live off that. It's not a lot of food, but there's not much happening. You know, life for them changed. But he's letting them know, though it has changed, it will come back to a better time. There will be a time again when you get to plant and you get to harvest what you have planted. There are seasons in our lives where things may turn completely upside down, where we feel there is a much traction, you know, in a positive direction, that the people of Israel were really being oppressed. You know, not much is happening for various reasons. You know, we may feel, see in our own lives, there may be limits, in finances, or maybe it's not finances. It may be, you know, a different era. There's a concern. Things happening maybe with the health or the health of a loved one close to us, distractions, hindrances, just various things in life. But God is still providing in the midst of it. Hezekiah prayed, and the answer may not have seemed immediate, you know, because he's telling them basically it's a three-year plan. This is one, what's going to happen in year one. This is what's going to happen in year two. And this is what's going to happen in year three. And we know that, you know, sometimes even we receive a prophetic word, but sometimes it just takes so long. You know, you just, you get weary, but God tells us certain things sometimes to encourage us, even if it's not a direct 
prophetic word about our individual situation. You know, the Bible, even in this situation, you know, he's saying, you pray and I'm going to answer. It may not be in the time you expect. It may not be in the way you expect, but I'm going to be making provisions while, while you wait. You know, sometimes that seed, that prayer seed just needs some time to grow. And the harvest will be much more than we planted, much more than we expect, because we know he does exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. How do you think, you know, this experience, you know, the, these these folks now think post the three years, you know, um, three years have gone and they've seen what God has done. How do you think this experience affected their understanding of who God is? Anyone? I know some joined a bit later. Um, okay, I'll go and see so. Sure. All right, so um, initially I had a thought. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that, you know, they weren't able to um, plant during the first series, as you were saying. But, you know, God still provided for them. So mm -hmm. I was saying to myself that God understood their circumstance. It wasn't that, you know, they didn't want to plant and they didn't want to get food for themselves, but it's just that they were unable to. And God is like, all right, I I hear what you're saying. I understand what's going on. So I'll still provide for you nonetheless, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, in the third year, you know, God is like, okay, you guys are going to have the ability to plant and I'm still going to provide for you guys. So I think um they just truly had a deeper understanding of um God's character in terms of him being so understanding in our situations and in our circumstances that um you know he just won't, won't leave us mm -hmm. you know for dead you know he will still continue to provide for us he understands our situ situation and circumstances and because he's so loving you know he still provides for us he's not like oh since you can't plant anything you know you're not going to have any food no he's like since you can't plant anything I'm going to I'm going to get food for you you know, until you're able to provide for yourself. So that's, that's it. so true. Cause he's a good father. I love that you share that Jaden. He's a, he's faithful. So no matter what, he's going to continuously be faithful. So even if, um, and Aliyah has something to share, go ahead, Aliyah. Um, I was just saying that I think also it builds resilience when we don't get what we want. So maybe that was um, a situation. I don't know what else happened. Mm -hmm. But maybe God was just preparing them this way so that whatever else was to come, they would be more prepared for it. So that's another thing. True, true. And any other thoughts? Anybody else want to share any other thoughts? I think that's that's the beautiful thing, right? That when God does one thing, it seems like one thing, but it's multifaceted. You know, what Jaden said and what Aliyah said are both true. You know, he's always doing things you know, to build on each other. He'll provide for now. We think we're getting what we need today, but he's feeding us for the future too. You know, building them up, being to be resilient for what may come next, to understand that this is who God is. You know, sometimes we have these difficult experiences, but one of the beautiful things that comes from it is to know God either in a way we hadn't known him before or much deeper you know, a greater experience. And yeah, God, I, I knew you were faithful, but I know, now, I, now I know you are really faithful when I've seen what you've done. So, you know, it, it builds on our relationship um, with him. You know, um, and I just pray, you know, that may God open our eyes, you know, because sometimes I notice when, you know, as, as we go through and we're talking to others who are going through and encouraging others when they're going through, it's like, it, you know, when something is an issue in our lives, it's like everything is around, it, it, it's around, our eyes are just so focused on that. Like you were saying, Aliyah, in your testimony, right? The speech is coming up and it's like, it's the end all be all. Meanwhile, there's so many other things moving, shifting, great things. But I ask that may God open our eyes and give us the right perspective, you know, as he's increasing what we have sown in prayer, like he did for Hezekiah. You know, going back to the scripture, it says in the third year, again, they, they sow and they reap, plant vineyards and eat fruit of them. And the remnant who escape of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. When the root is coming out of a seed, when we think of the process of, again, the seed growing or what's inside the seed growing, 
it's it's happening in a dark place, right? Usually you put a seed in in the earth, and you're not it, once it, you're you plant that seed, you cover it, you water. It's hidden. You don't know what's happening. You only recognize something was happening below the surface when you when you see the plant break ground. But it's necessary for the roots to be strong, you know, to produce the fruit. Something has to be happening underneath the surface. Something has to be happening inside us as God is doing his work for, you know, us to bear fruit. The maturation process takes time before we can actually see the fruit, even in the natural, when the seed is planted. This is not much different from the process we go through in our journey with God. He wants us to be rooted and built up in him so that we may be able to stand when difficult things come our way, future difficult things, and that we may be able to attain higher heights in him. Upon reviewing the you know, viewing the pictures of the seeds and fruits last week, and I'll show it again at the end. Um, someone said, you know, one of the comments again that was shared is it's easier to identify the fruit than the seed. If you see the seed again by itself, it's hard to tell what fruit it produces. It's easier to identify progress and breakthrough than to put a positive label on what comes before it. What comes before it may be pain, maybe doubts, um, maybe wavering, thoughts of giving up. So it doesn't make it easy to identify, you know, what will come at the end. But now that we know, you know, now that we, you know, for those who knew already, but have been just reminded of the principle of seed, time and harvest, as it relates also to life, it will hopefully change our perspective or make an impression, impression on how our outlook our expectation, you know, which is our fate during the time of waiting, during the time of praying and praising God and, and fasting and, and expecting something to change. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When the seed is planted, we're not seeing what's happening, but something is happening. The scripture says next year, you'll live off what grows from that. You know, is it possible that we could interpret this time as stagnation, you know, and think that nothing's happening, God's not doing anything. If you if you think of experiences that you've gone through, right? Or even an experience you're going through right now. I don't know if anyone wants to just share um, your thoughts on that. You know, have you ever seen a time as stagnation, you know, and think even after praying, nothing is happening. Um, anyone wanna share? I'm sure we've all had this experience. Well, Jaden, you are saying something, and then Marianne, please. Oh, I said I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of. Think. I know I have it before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Marianne, you want to share one? Well, yes, actually, it's happening right now, and um, like two weeks ago, when you talked about um having a plan, mm -hmm. strategy, strategy was a word. Mm -hmm. And I know I was a, I was actually going to come on last week, but I ended up being too busy to like to be apologized. So I felt like I was a little negative, but I feel like, um, you know, right now that's what my life is about because my mom has dementia and I have to spend a lot of time there. And I also have to, I'm the one that's taking care of all her book work. She owns a couple of houses, the tenants, all that stuff. So I don't have a lot of time to pursue or even, you know, take time to meditate or alone time. I seem to always have this huge to-do list. So mm -hmm. I'm frustrated. I'm like, how can I grow and do things and have plans when I'm so tied up? So, but mm -hmm. I hear you say that. And I keep saying to myself, no, God is teaching me things through this difficult time. Mm -hmm. God is, you know, healing some stuff, some, you know, just teaching me joy and peace in every situation, you know, so I'm saying, no, no, I'm not stagnant. I'm growing and learning. It's it's just deep. It's not, you know, so. Anyway. Absolutely. Nothing is wasted. You know, nothing, no, nothing is wasted with our God. You know, he, all things work together for good. So you think you're not having the time to do what you think you should be doing now. Meanwhile, the very thing you're doing, you're getting something from it. You know, and that's what I'm praying that like God give us the that perspective even while it's happening, because what we see maybe as negative is exactly part of his plan. 
Anybody else want to share? All right. Hi, Taz. Don't mistake the growth process for stagnation. Mark 4, 26 through 28 says, he, and he said, which is Jesus, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. So when we plant these seeds, when we pray, you know, when God is, he's causing the increase, we don't know how the increase is happening. You know, some might think, okay, if I want to, I want to, you know, manage a company, I want to lead a company one day, then, you know, in my thought, the way that it's going to grow, the skills that are, I, I need to do this is going to happen is if I, if I take this class, you know, if I, I sign up for this program, you know, we have our set way, but he's saying, no, you know, as I, as I uh, have you leading, you know, the people in your house, as I have you leading, you know, a group at school, as I have you involved in this, this, this other activity, you don't understand that the seed is, is sprouting, it's growing, because that's not our view of how it should happen. So it's just, you know, God, give us the, the perspective to see that all things you know, we put this before you, all things are working together for our good because we love you, you know, and, and Miriam, again, it goes back to, you know, that thing you just said to God of, um, you, you want to do public speaking. He had you start in this, you know, this, um, place that fe fed people. And then you went to do a Ted talk and how many other things, you know, or how many other platforms that you've spoken on, but he was preparing. And we just sometimes don't see the preparation because it's not typical and it's not what how we expect it to be. You know, we've planted things by faith and then we wait on God to do his part. God is telling the people that there will be a time when things will be different, though they are only a remnant, it says. I'm, again, a remnant is a small remaining quantity. They may think, you know, we were such a mighty people before and now it's just us left. What, you know, what power do we have when it's just us? But that's all God needs. He will cause life to be productive again, just from that small rem remnant, just from that thing we see as seemingly sometimes insignificant. God is once again telling us that he can do great things with something that is small or perceived as small. First Corinthians um, chapter one, verse 27 says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Can you think of other examples of this in scripture? Or, or can you see this in your own life or the life of someone you know that, you know, it seemed like a small thing but God did something great with it. Anybody want to share? There's okay. several. Go ahead, Jade. Uh, I'll, I'll go. All right. So, um, I remember when um the the youth of my church we were trying to um find some other ways in which we could get some more people to come um to our youth fellowship on Fridays. So you know, we just had a random idea of like having a live stream, right? So, you know, sharing about experiences um, at um, our youth fellowship, sharing about, like, our camps and activities that we did. And, you know, we were just having fun because we were just talking and just having fun there. And then after, like, before, right before the live stream ended, you know, somebody had messaged us on the live stream asking if they could be a part of our church. And we're like, yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. And, then, you know, we didn't think anything big of it. And then mm -hmm. um after that, no, we reached out to them and they, they came on they came on one Friday and you know we had to and funnily enough that night was the night when we were getting to know each other more. So we mm -hmm. actually had got to have a conversation with everybody there. So you know we got to know the two there are two um there are two young gentlemen there. So we got to know them better. And then it's like a week after you know he gave his life to the Lord. I'm like, yo God, what? I'm like, it's so funny because that was not really the intention. You know, we just started as something small, but God, God did something so big with it. And if you see him now, he's like, he's not afraid to say that he loves God. You know, he's always mm -hmm. at or you fellowship. He's always um um interactive. He always is just so 
he just wants to do everything and anything. I'm like, like, look how you, you know, work this together for really good. So yeah. That's an awesome testimony. That's awesome. A soul was saved from that, you know. That's awesome. And that's he he does it over and over. Anybody else want to share one? It could be in the Bible, it could be personal. Go ahead, Michelle. I am here, dead bee, but um I have so much testimony to share right now, but I'm not even sure right now is the right time. Mm. But in this last week, I said, Lisa, God is showing. Maybe to you hearing, it seems so minute. It so, seems so maybe maybe to you stupid as well. No. But for me, Mr. God has show up and God is doing. If we just in every situation look, sometimes we don't even have to look deep. We just say, oh, God is moving. Mm -hmm. Last night, for instance, I'm coming home, doing a connecting flight in Atlanta. I'd never done a connecting flight. I did it the other day. And my baggage, my check-on just got straight to Jamaica. I thought it was the same thing last night. But I'm just going to show you how God work. Last night when I reached Atlanta, not showing where to go through, you know, different, different places, where to go to your connect to your flight. Mm -hmm. I was just walking, Lisa. And when I walk, I say the car is sold with my bag on it. And I said, what am I back doing here? I thought it should go straight to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know where to walk, where to go. Mm -hmm. And just as I reach at that point is my luggage that I say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, I just giving God thanks because I could not walk that particular route where I walk. Yeah. I'm past, I'm a reach home and my bag not there. Exactly. I didn't know, no, I had was to collect back my bag in Atlanta again mm -hmm. and check it at another point there again. You understand? Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. me, there is so many things to give God thanks for. The other night again, when we were in Jamaica, oh my God, we got a problem with a room. Went to the front desk. They said, anyway, send a maintenance person. We heard a knock where we look a man barge in the room on us. Mm. Telling us to she, but it was just, and when I, I just sit the gap and the God just move Lisa and all I can say, thank you, Lord. It might sound, mm -hmm. or maybe just talk it casually, but I tell you, mm -hmm. at it. this time, it's like I just say, God, moving instantaneously. And all I can say is just thank you, Lord. Just thanks, 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 yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. And it just coming like it's each day. Each mm -hmm. day is like I just see them, the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord. You know? Mm -hmm. As I keep hearing Taz the other day, said, God is a God of the impossible, I tell you. Mm -hmm. I can't let go of him, you know. I can't let go of him because it's like he's proving himself. It's like I'm questioning him and he's proving it back to me. I say, see me working, dear. You know, I don't yes. even have to question. It's like I know. That's I it. know. And when you're going through, as you ask the question, what happened when you're going through the rough time? When you're going through the rough time, you know, if we understand the rough time, the rough time, it's hard, but it's a good time. It is a good mm -hmm. time in the sense that it is building us for what is to come. Because what is to come is not normal, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's always something good coming out of it, but it's just hard when we're going through that 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 phase, you know. So, so man, the testimony is that, oh, no, 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 let go of God. Oh, I'm panning tight because... I just think this year is going to be a rough year, but I think it's going to be a good year, you know? Mm -hmm. A good, good year. So that's just my little sharing right now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And that's encouraging. And that, you know, please don't ever feel like this, anything you have to share is too small. And I never think stupid because it's just another way that someone can know this is, this is God. Because, you know, sometimes it's not until you get to a certain places in understanding that you can say, oh, that was him before you just like, oh, you know, sometimes that you don't even notice. But now when we can see and I and give, attribute it to him, it's like it's it, it's another thing to help build on the relationship and awareness, you know, of God. So thank you for sharing, Michelle. That's an amazing testimony. Anybody else want to share? Okay. Uh Go ahead. Uh, I'm going again. Sure. Right, so it's so funny that we're talking about um, you know, siege right now. Um, so normally 
again for our youth fellowship on Fridays, normally we do activities, you know, at church. But for this Friday, we, we went to a different church, right? So um, I think I'm on a journey right now, right, where I'm trying to, you know, be deeper in my relationship with God as it pertains to spirituality and my spiritual gifts. Right, so um, I just went to, I think all of us went to, uh, Keswick, a Keswick convention yesterday. And, you know, I was just there. I was like, okay, so this is going to be fun, you know. It's a nice going out trip. So I was there not expecting anything much. And then um, the the pastor that was preaching, it's like he was just he was just saying everything. Like he was like, oh, you know, some of you are here, you know, who want to unearth your spiritual gifts. There are some gifts inside of you that God wants to bring out to you. I'm, so, I'm like, yeah, this guy's talking about me, you know. This guy's talking about me, you know. And then um, I just felt the Holy Spirit moving me to go up there, you know, to you know, um, to receive the prayer and stuff. And he was, he was just there, he was praying for me. I was like, God, how amazing you are, are you? Because um, this is something I want to do. This is, I want to have a deep relationship with you spiritually. I want to, you know, unearth your spiritual gifts so I can build your kingdom up. And it's so crazy that um, I went there without that intention and then receiving that prayer because that's a seed that was planted, you know. Um, And I'm understanding that, you know, that prayer, you know, is the beginning of you know this journey I'm trying to go on you know and I'll see God working more and more but it's it's so because I've heard somebody call it a divine encounter before so you know it was meant to happen but to me it was like I was just going somewhere you know and that, that was unexpected but then that happened is kind of crazy because I was like you know God this is exactly what I needed this is this is a seed that I needed to be planted you know so that I can unearth my spiritual gifts so that's <laughs> that's it for me again sorry i was muted i said you know we will be seeing the fruit of that you know of that that prayer and i think for me at least one of the things for me in wrapping in in focusing on the principle of seed time and harvest is you know we all know i don't know what we i hate to wait <laughs> you know it's it's not pleasant it's not comfortable waiting but if i if if i think about this process that you know, when I know I plant something, I know something. It's just like if I plant little seed, I usually plant little seedlings, or it's been a while rather, you know, in inside in a plant container before um, it's in the spring, before it gets warm and I can transplant it outside. But once I plant it and I, I'm watering it and I know, you know, the, the soil is good, I'm expecting some things to come. Like I'm just waiting each day. I know it's going to come. And I'm like, God, if I can think of the my prayer like that, my praise like that, the giving of my time like that, then I know that something is going to come from these things because these are seeds of righteousness. So, and he says to us that there will be a reward. So it's something we, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee that something is going to come. It may not come how we want it, how we think, you know, it should come, but it will come. Job 8, again, verse 7 says, Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. You know, we've probably all heard it said that little is much when God is in it. There are many ways we sow seeds unto God beyond a monetary seed. You know, um, some of the, and I'll name some, and please feel free to share some as well, that, you know, some of the seeds um, we sow are kindness, you know, compassion, Praying, as I said, fasting, obedience is a seed, as we said before, faithfulness, you know, um, uh, commitment to something, you know, even you're going to school, spending time studying, 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 you're going to see something come from all that studying. You know, God is glorified when, uh, for example, like I said, compassion is a seed. God is glorified when we show compassion, even to one person. We may not think that our giving to someone or a cause is that big of a deal, right? You know, Mary Ann, when you spoke in that in the in the place that was feeding, you know, the people, you know, someone, even someone who didn't acknowledge you was hearing, and that's a seed that you planted in them. And sometimes, unfortunately, we don't get to see what that that seed produces, but just know that. You know, if we believe by faith, we're doing this by faith, we're doing this for the glory of God. Something is happening with that seed that we that we sow. Mark 20, Matthew rather, 25, verse 40 says, the king will reply. You know, Jesus is talking to the people, what's gonna happen, you know, when he comes back? 
and he says to people, you know, you did this for me and that for me. And they were saying, the king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brothers, brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So as we're doing things, you know, for others, even we're actually blessing God. And we know that, you know, God is a rewarder. Galatians 3 verse 11 says, the just shall live by faith. So we live by faith knowing the principle of seed time and harvest is real. You know, God says in Genesis 8 verse 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. It's never going to end. So even if what we plan today, we have, I wonder, you know, at some point, it's going to produce fruit. We are sowing to the spirit as we believe the word of God and move, taking action in alignment with our faith. And as we do things that reflect Christ, when we do what God has put it within our power to do, these are all seeds. You know, faith without works is dead, as we know. The seed is already in us, but remains sometimes dormant until we move. We walk by faith and not by sight in knowing that God is doing something as we move and act in accordance with his word. You know, he's going to provide the increase. Proverbs 11 verse 18 says, the wicked man earns an empty wage, but he who sows righteousness reaps a true reward. Time spent in us doing Bible study, seeking God, seeking peace, helping others, fasting, praying, are sowing seeds of righteousness. And there are so many other things. Obedience, as we said, and, and I'm sure you could name others. Does anyone want to name any others? Well, if you think of any others, share with us. Galatians 6, verse 7 through 9 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So, you know, know that just like we, we talked about and just that we know in the natural Different seeds have a different harvest time, right? You know, some things uh, take a short time to harvest um, the fruit. Sometimes some things take years to harvest the fruit. But know that, you know, if you're planting seeds, you can expect, I can expect something to come from these seeds of righteousness that we're sowing. You know, from my experience, the blessing, the blessing that we receive at the end, the harvest that we receive, you know, outweighs what comes before it outweighs the struggle. I, you know, as I, I talked about with King Hezekiah and, and the people there, you know, they were suffering. They were in a time of difficulty, hardship, um, you know, but the, there was a blessing coming, even though God was saying in the third year, this is what will happen. There were still blessings along the way, but a bigger blessing was coming at the third year. What do you think about this statement that blessings outweigh the struggle you know how do you feel about that do you feel it's true do you feel what are your thoughts when you think about even yourself as you have you know had to go through difficult moments but you're at a point where you've already seen the other side of those difficult moments would you agree that it outweighs the struggle or would you do you say otherwise anybody want to share yeah, I think uh, for me, Lisa, I think it outweighs the struggle, but you going through the struggle is very difficult. And um, I heard you said something as well that about reaping. Sometimes, for instance, with me personally, sometimes I don't look for when I do anything or I plant a seed in the sense like, as you said, planting a seed. I don't look for the reward for myself plenty of time. You know? I just tell myself my child will benefit from whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. sometimes you won't see it instantaneously. You won't see it just now. Or you personally won't benefit from whatever you plant mm -hmm. or the goodness you have done. Mm -hmm. But I look to say my child will benefit from it. You know? So, I love that one. I mean, it's the same thing, you know, even when you think of Abraham, right? Through Abraham's obedience, you know, God said the nations will be blessed. You know, something that he wouldn't see 
You know, he didn't see um, because of his obedience how how much the people grew. And even with us being, you know, being called sons of God, just by believing in Jesus, like he didn't see the result of the generations to come that from his obedience. And that's the same thing with us. I love that you said it, you know, your daughter will will get the blessings from this. And maybe her children or children's children um, will get blessings from it. So, yeah, we just don't know when the harvest is coming. Oh, oh that's not you. Michelle. Yes, Sister Lisa. Go ahead, Sister Pam. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, no, afternoon. I, I agree that um, struggle, um, blessing will always struggle. Is that what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in other words, I would say struggle is like a blessing in disguise. True. No, it doesn't because, feel that um, way, right? When, when, when you're struggling with something and you 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 you're struggling because you see the good in it. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a good at the end of the tunnel. You might not see physically it, like 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 the scripture says, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. You're struggling towards your goal. And as you are struggling, the struggling is developing you. It's preparing you for the goal you're heading towards. And when you finally get there and, and, and you look back from whence you come, you will see all the blessings that you that overtake you. I would say, what are you going over there for? Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> you will see, um, I'm a little distracted, I'm sorry. You will see all the blessings that overtake you. you are you overtook during your struggle mm -hmm. as you struggle towards your goal? So um, there's a lot of blessing. And for instance, um, you have a business and the Lord might drop it in your spirit to do, you know, something. And you don't know how, you don't know where, you don't know when. But by stepping out on that faith and start, you start to get experience towards this business. You start to get answers because you're seeking. You're learning, you're getting knowledge, you're gaining wisdom. You are developing as a business person, even though you're struggling. Mm -hmm. And at the end of, of, of it all, you're going to see all the blessings that you get from it. Amen. Amen. It's we, we, we sometimes just can't see, like you said, what's happening, but he's doing something with it. Just I told someone this week, I said, you know, there's there is purpose in your pain, you know, but at the time when you're going through it, you don't really, you can't see it. You can't feel it. Sometimes you can't understand it. You know, why, why do I have to go through it? But he's going to use all the pieces, you know, to prepare us, you know, for what, what it is we desire sometimes, what it is that he has for us to do in the future. Like I said, nothing is wasted. You know, when we pray for favor in our lives for God to use us mightily or for God to take us to another level. Thank you, Sister Pam. Sorry. You know, in him, God prepares us for just that. Um, you know, the scripture says before honor is humility. He may need to do some molding, right? We're thinking of the, the grand place we want to get, but he's like, I, I got to work on this first, Lisa, because I feel like, you know, it's like, if I don't work on this, when you get there, you're going to fall. You know, he takes us through process after process to make us ready for the appointed time. You know, if we if he doesn't, though it may seem painful, the process, you know, we may not be able to sustain our position. We may not be we may might be overwhelmed by it, but he wants to prepare us. He wants us to, you know, bear the fruit that we have the potential to. He wants us to be ready. And so he will do these things that. You know, the, some of the things we say why to, some of the things we might even say, you know, it doesn't make sense that I'm doing this. But he says, I know the plans I have for you. And he says, it's of good and not of evil to give us an expected end. You know, Jesus was perfect, yet he had to endure suffering to gain victory for us. You know, victory over sin and death. Even Jesus, the son of God, could not bypass the process, could not bypass the process of pain, 
for his father to be glorified. He had to endure it. We too are the seed of God, sons and daughters of God. So, you know, we know, it says we partake in his suffering. And yes, there's joy, of course, the joy comes. But part of it is sometimes going through things we don't want to go through. John 15 verse 2 says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. The pruning is is different based on what he wants to produce in, you know, your life versus my my life, you know. Um, but we know we know pruning doesn't feel good, you know, taking away certain things. But he knows that once we're pruned, we have the potential. Just like you know, I had a rose bush in my yard, and I took a picture of it. That thing was as dead as a door, and I was like, oh, I wasted my money. It it just looked completely dead. But I hadn't had a chance to to take uproot it and throw it away. My neighbor is just so wonderful. She comes over and she does all these different things. And one day I looked and I saw the rose bush and I saw like two roses on it. And I'm like, what happened? I thought this thing was dead. And she told me she just did some clipping. She, she pruned it. And because of that, it was able to sprout again. And that's what God wants to do with us sometimes. And again, it doesn't feel pleasant. Um, but again, we know Romans 8, 28 very well that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Now, I, I see that it's 1238. So I'm not going to go through. I'm just going to skip down a bit. But I'm going to ask when you have some time to read Hebrews 12, you know, 1 through 15. Because it talks about, you know, how God disciplines and it doesn't seem pleasant, but what he's producing, you know, while he disciplines. And I, I'll just say a couple of things before I show you the slide that we looked at last week again that, you know, I was having a conversation with Kerry this week and I said, sometimes favor doesn't look, doesn't look like favor and favor doesn't feel like favor. Sometimes it just hurts, you know, um, but when you look at, you know, the lives of some of the people that we admire in the Bible, you know, when I look at Joseph and we know what Joseph went through, but even as he was going through, it says, but the Lord's hand, the Lord was with Joseph, it says. And, that, you know, so when we, you know, we pray these prayers, we want to be used by God. God, we want to go to, to these higher levels in you, higher heights in you. The process isn't always going to be pleasant. It isn't going to look like what we think it should look like. You know, people say, you see the glory, but you don't know the story, you know, what it took to get there. So, but I started the question out by asking, you know, what was behind Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us? And at the root of it was love. At the root of his pruning, at the, at the root of what he's doing for us to produce more fruit is always love. You know, and it, I think it's important to remember that because if, you know, knowledge and understanding of, of God and his word is so important because we can misinterpret, you know, the things that we go through in life, see it in the way that he really doesn't intend, you know, for us to, to, see, to see it. And I'll just read one of the last scriptures we have is John 15, um, verse 4 and 8 and 16. It says, abide in me and I in you. He's saying, don't give up. We're going through this together. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And I, I was going on our, our usual end time because I forgot we started at 11, 1130. So we do have a few more minutes, but it says, by this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Like, which one of us doesn't want to be at that position that whatever we ask the Father, he's going to give us, you know? But we know it comes with obedience. We know it comes with him perfecting that which concerns us and and, and again, it's not always pleasant. And I just, you know, for me, part of, I think, enlightening or being enlightened is just the authenticity of our experience with God. Yes, there are wonderful things, right? You know, he gives us wonderful things. Um, but there's also a side that is not pleasant to experience. But we know that Jesus himself 
went through it also. So we're not going to be able to abort the process. If we abort the process, we're not going to get what he wants to, to, to give us. And it's a tremendous blessing that he wants to give us. He wants us to experience the fullness, you know, of his glory. He wants us to, he says, you know, call unto me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things that you have not known. It's like, I, I want to see it, Lord, but I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go through what it takes to get there. But they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand with each other. Does, does anyone want to say anything? Can I say something sure. just a little bit about God's love? Because when I very first started, I talked about going to the homeless shelter mm -hmm. and um, I said something there, but I didn't follow it up because I was trying to shorten my time. But I, when I explained this homeless shelter, it was old. And when I said it was packed with unwashed bodies, um, you know, I walked by guy, like one big guy shaking down some other guy for his drug money, whatever. So it's just in the natural, this was a terrible um, situation, not situation, but um, place. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't, there wasn't anything that I could say that was nice about it. And I was really nervous about walking in. But literally, when I stepped through the door, I literally stepped into love. Like I was infused with love unbelievably. And it just wasn't. So like I said, you can't look or think of a situation in the natural. You have to kind of be hearing from God. And that was the only reason I went back the following week was because I wanted to be infused in that love. And I was still nervous. I walked up to it and I was nervous because again, it was just all these kind of unsavory types around. And when I stepped in, I was infused with love. So even in the worst of situation, God's love is there and he wants to show it to people. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I just got to experience that love and mm -hmm. not in a nice quote unquote place. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage people that they might find themselves in a place that in the natural doesn't look great or doesn't seem like it's a blessing but kind of look for God's favor in it, like we've been talking about, you know, but yeah. that was an experience. So that's a great example of it. And, you know, and I appreciate your sharing that because again, it's, it's in the unexpected places that he shows himself, you know, I, I say that that's, that's God's MO, his modus operandi, right? You yes. know, he, that's just him from the beginning. Jesus Christ, even when you think of it, people are expecting this Messiah and he, he shows up as a baby, <laughs> you know, lowly baby, you know, has to grow up and, 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 and to these parents, humble parents, you know, they say born in a stable, like not in a kingdom, not in a palace, you know, but that's just him. He likes to show, show up in, in the low places. We talk, we had a uh, lesson on lowliness, like God is in these places, these unexpected places. And, and sometimes that's where we're going to get the best encounters of our lives. You know, it's not when we're at the top or um, even when you're at the top, you're going through different things. And, you know, just to see God's hand at every turn is like just, you know, it's just to, to love him even more, to understand, oh, my God, this is you, God. You know, when someone who loves you does little things, even, you know, you really appreciate it. And now now that we can see that, you know what? It's God who showed Michelle, brought Michelle at that, at the baggage um, runway thing or a claim at the time, at the very moment she needed to see it so that her bag is not, you know, in this place and she's in another place. It's like, oh, you know, th that's you, God. And it's just the, those things that make us just appreciate him even more and more. And it, it's wonderful. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Anybody else want to say anything? Well, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, and after you have suffered a little while, you know, after we've gone through the pruning, after we've gone through the molding, after we've gone through the waiting as a seed is growing and not even thinking that there's a seed growing, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, 
and establish you. Like, you know, I'm as I'm saying it to us, I'm saying it to myself, like, remember, because when you go through things, when you're going through things, like, it's like, it's that word that you kind of have to hold on to, because like, God, everything I'm seeing, everything I'm feeling looks nothing like this place. It looks nothing like the joy, the peace, the restoration. It's like, but that's why, you know, encourage one another while it's called today, refresh and renew our minds, our hopes, you know, with the word. Um, because sometimes life is difficult. You know, there was promise. When I think of the Red Sea and the Jordan, you know, there was promise on the other side. You know, there is promise on the other side of the Red Sea, promise on the other side of the, the Jordan. But you, we needed, the people needed to cross over to get to the land of milk and honey. It's like what was behind them was something that could, you know, remember people wanted to go back. Even there's, there's to me sometimes comfort in, in dysfunction, comfort even when things aren't working well, but it's, it's what we know, right? But when he wants to take us to another place, another level, it's like, okay, you gotta let go. You gotta, you gotta move. And, you know, I, I, I remind, as I was doing this part of the lesson, I was reminded this person said she had a dream about me. And she said, in the dream, Lisa, it's like, you know, God wanted to take you higher, but you were holding on. And I wanted to, and I was just trying to pull your hands away from what you were holding on. And she's like, it was, you know, I'm, I'm a person get grew. So she's like, there's like blood because I'm holding on so tight. And I'm like, God, let me let go. Let me let go. Let us all let go of the place where we're, we're comfortable so that we can get to a higher place in you, that we can get to a greater experience, get to a greater level of relationship, understanding, peace. You know, he says, let him who glory, glory in this, that he knows me. And it, it, it takes a process to get to that, you know, deeper place with God. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine says, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. You know, pain does not feel pleasant or comfortable, but sometimes we have to leave what seems comfortable to get to the other side, to get to the harvest of our blessings. Um, I wanted to show you again, you know, this, 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 the slide that I showed last week. And it's a final reminder that, you know, seeds look nothing like the beautiful harvest they produce, you know, as we remain in God. Just remember that, you know, as you see this slide, if, if one, you know, image captures kind of this lesson, I'm hoping this is it. Even if we don't remember different words along the way, you know, if we can remember these images. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So this is the process we know of, you know, seed time and harvest itself. I wonder if I can move this, right? We know this is the, the germination process. Look, the seed looks nothing like, you know, the plant that comes with its, its stages. As the stages are going, it's building, the root is going, the root is coming down, you know, the shoot is, the sprout is coming up, you know, and it's getting bigger and the roots are getting wider so that this, this plant can be stable. And, and that's like us, you know, that's like us with the seed that God has planted in us to do things as we move in him and with our faith, you know, he's, he's rooting us in him. You know, we are being built up in him to produce fruit. And these are some of the seeds, a couple of the seeds, and I added a new one that we saw last week. You see, the seed looks nothing like the fruit. Look at this, the grape seed. And then look at this beautiful grape, um, the bunch of grapes. Look at, this is a jackfruit seed. And we know that jackfruit can be so big and it's just so vibrant what it produces. This is the, the watermelon seed, right? It looks nothing like what it produces. So there are seeds that we're planting as we name some of them already. And even if you thought of some more in mind, you know, the praise, you know, the prayer, the sacrifice, the time spent with God, the time studying his word, you know, that we don't know the beautiful thing that it's creating on the other side, you know, what's what the harvest will be. But there, what we know is certainly 100% there will be a harvest. Like, you know, there's a seed here, you know, mourning, but he says joy is gonna come. 
beauty on this side for the ashes. Some things that seem dead, some things that seem hopeless, you know, put it before God and, and God can create beauty out of that. Psalm 126, five through six again says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless. I love that. God uses these absolute words and let us know it's a guarantee shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. He's just so wonderful. Marianne says she has to leave. I look forward to see what God does in all our lives. You too have a great week, Marianne. Thank you for being on and all that you shared. Amen. Anybody want to um, comment before we move to prayer? Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. I, I wanted to comment to say that, um, you know, if we, as, as believers, when we identify in Christ, with Christ, we, we identify not only in um, the great and wonderful things, but we, like Lisa said, we identify um, with, with, it, with him in his suffering. And the Bible, Apostle Paul also talks a lot about, um, are you able to hear me, Shirley? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, the Apostle Paul also talks a lot about um, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. <clears throat> so you would think that we would we would see all these different things about even count it all joy when you enter into diverse temptation and all these things. You would think that <laughs> it would it would go off in our minds to say, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, when I see when I see trouble, that means something better is on the other side. But for some reason, it doesn't. It doesn't. No matter how long you've been in church, when you're in it, mm -hmm. I mean, when Lisa's in it, I see it clear as day, mm -hmm. you know. But and I'm sure when I'm in it, Lisa sees it clear as day too. But when when it's me in the the going through the pruning and going through the processing. All I see is just the pruning and the processing. It's almost like you have a instantaneous amnesia. You forget that, hello, um, all through this good book that you've been listening to when you go to church and the pastor preach, you yourself read it over and over, you know? And that's why sometimes, uh, that's why it's good to, to have these, these lessons and, you know, over and over, somebody else might come with another lesson with the same, same themes, you know, it's the reminders, we need them, we really, really need them, you know, and you, you, you think you know until, until you're in something, you know, so I just want to say, yes, it's true, the, the sufferings are not worthy he said they're not even worthy to be compared you know like whatever that grape seed went through is not even worthy to be compared to the beautiful grape you know that just looks so look like it never been through a thing you know mm -hmm. yes so, um, and even in the stories like you said with joseph and um um with daniel you know and um, the three Hebrew boys being thrown in the fiery furnace and all these things, you know, God throughout from, from all to new Testament is showing us that, listen, you go through something, but you come out on the other side. And, 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 and he said that we are overcomers and we're more than conquerors. So if you're more than conquerors, then what are you conquering? Your nice, beautiful life. You know, if you're, <laughs> are you overcoming your great, wonderful life? That's always smooth the smooth road no you have to go through some things so thank you it was, good. it was good although i came on late it was great praise god praise god and, and thank you as i say you know carrie I always give these great like little analogies you know which i love that seal the you know the point home even more you know it, it's right what are we conquering what are we overcoming you know overcoming a good thing you're overcoming something difficult but I love that God gives us always a way of escape you know a, a phone call right on time a song in our heart you know a person to come and say I'm going to pray with you a person to hug you a person to share a testimony 
you know, it's, 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 he always provides a way of escape, but we know, thank God we have that assurance that, you know what, God, as I sow these seeds of righteousness, there is going to be a reward. There is absolutely going to be a reward because of what you say in seed time and harvest is principle that will all, it will forever be there, you know? So I thank God for the reminder today. Um, I, Alia says, I mean, I feel like the opening prayer was answered for me about getting an answer, or even reminder about something that we're praying about because I just in talking to God about how, you know, it doesn't feel good to go through the process because I was reminded that the blessings outweigh the struggles and they do and they do. Praise God. We thank God for the reminder today. And anybody else want to share anything before we do the prayer request? Yes. 